Hi everyone, and welcome back to another one of our tech talks. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on the roughing processes for this part behind us. And I'm happy to welcome Ben from Sambit Corriment, who's gonna be giving me a little lesson on what strategy to use, what tooling to use, and then how do I make sure we get the most out of it with Fusion 360. So yeah, so, you know, we're looking at uh, this application today. Uh, and the first thing we're looking at is high feed sign milling, you know, selecting the correct uh, process uh, for the product and also the application that we've got here. As we know, with titanium, uh, it's all about managing that heat. Uh, there's only one place the heat can go, and that's going to be into the tool. So we need to make sure that we have both the right tool and the right tool paths for machining a, a, a product and feature like this. So to look at the product itself, you know, we've got a dedicated uh, grade that, that we have for this product and a, a geometry as well to match it so it's making sure that we get the best out of the tool for these applications with you know a, a good wear resistance uh, low thermal conductivity you know to keep those the heat generated under control yes yeah, so it's all about heat then with the titanium absolutely it's managing that heat so i think back to the days when i was an apprentice and i used to use you know indexable mills and i used to go nearly 100 percent step over with a tiny step down this feels like a really different process yeah, it's a totally different approach. You know, these uh, larger step overs like you spoke about doesn't always mean that it's going to be the most productive way of machining uh, this kind of material. You know, as we can see there with the long engagement, this large AP, you know, we can utilize that full length uh, and still get a high metal removal rate and run it at much higher uh, data, higher VC surface speed than you would when you were looking at a larger uh, width of cut that you're talking about. Yeah, just one quick thing. What's, what's VC? So VC is the surface speed. So we use oh, the surface speed, speed okay. and that enables us to calculate our RPM. Yeah, because that's dependent on the diameter, not just the RPM, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. So we, you know, we have to do a calculation for that to make sure that we can get the correct uh, RPM for the uh, application that we're doing. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, so it seems like there's a lot of technology around the tool and we just now need to make sure that when we program this from inside of Fusion, we're, we're using that to the most. Because I suppose it's one of those, if you've got the flutes, let's use them. Let's go full engagement um, and tiny step overs then. Yeah, definitely. You know, the, the tool is one thing, but making sure that we've got the right tool path as well to match that tool is really important. Yeah, perfect. Okay, brilliant. So I suppose it's, let's jump into Fusion and see how we do this. Yep, let's go. Even though the roughing operations are rarely seen on the finished product, ensuring the right amount of stock is removed during this process can drastically influence the way we need to finish off our part. In Fusion 360, we have dedicated adaptive roughing strategies. These complement the flute geometry of Sandvik Corriment's solid carbide Plura M mills. Take the outer profile of this component. We've used a 2D adaptive roughing strategy here this allows the selection of a contour for the toolpath to be calculated from. The side of the contour to be machined is indicated by the arrow and can easily be flipped. Using a 2D adapted strategy on the outside of the part completes the roughing at one level. This allows us to fully utilize the flute length of Sandvik's 5xD Plura M mills. Now looking at the inner portions of this component, we need to use our 3D adaptive roughing strategy. We'll be using the CoroPlus tool library to ensure the correct tool is chosen for the application and the recommended cutting parameters are also applied. We start with defining the type of geometry we're going to be cutting and providing further details on the depth of cut and conveying to the tool library that we're using adaptive or dynamic milling strategies that are optimized to utilize the full flute length of the tool. Now to choose the exact tool and build the full assembly. Everything from the collet to the Coro Chuck 930 holder and the interface with our HSK100 spindle. We now have the full representation ready to send to Fusion. Not only the tool geometry will be sent over and the cutting parameters, but also we can look at the recommended step down and step over to be used with this tool. When we program an adaptive roughing strategy, the optimal load or step over is the driving factor. I'm sure we've all lost a tool or two when previously a tool has entered into a corner similar to its own diameter and we experience a large spike in engagement. Normally this results in poor surface finish with excessive deflection or even worse, having a critical failure of the tool itself due to this spike in load. Programming with adaptive roughing in Fusion 360 ensures the tool load is kept constant 
resulting in a maximized tool life. Using our 3D roughing strategies, we'll optimize the step downs across the part to remove as much material while using the maximum depth of cut before picking out the finer detail working back up the part. This is where our minimum step down comes in. The larger the value here, the larger the roughing steps will be on the part. Reducing this will help with the finishing process, however it will increase the cycle time of the toolpath. This is a balancing act between efficiently roughing the component and ensuring the finishing toolpaths are not having to machine excessive and constantly changing amounts of rest material. It is not uncommon for additional material left on in the roughing to show through as poor surface finish on our final finishing operations. Using Fusion 360's in-process stock view here, we can see each toolpath and the condition of the material that will be left in once completed. We can see the difference in machining time and remaining material between having a 1mm fine step down and a 5mm fine step down. Be it multiple setup aerospace work or mold and die tools, Fusion 360 can provide optimized roughing strategies to ensure you're getting the most out of your tools and keeping your machine cutting efficiently. With that, I want to say a big thank you to Ben for really giving me a lesson on why we need to choose these tools and then how to actually program them correctly and get the most out of them. Yeah, absolutely. It's about getting you know, the best of the benefits out of these tools, you know, ensuring that we utilize them in the best way, both with the features of the tools, but obviously the tool path as well that's generated by yourselves. Yeah, it's all about removing that material as quickly and also as effectively as possible as well. It's definitely taught me something um, and I'll be taking that forward on when I look at programming jobs, the strategies I choose and then the tooling behind those strategies. Remember, we've also used the Coro Plus Tool Guide integration inside of Fusion to make that selection process even easier. There's no more scrolling through catalogues, trying to find that long digit code that you'll inevitably forget. You can do this all from inside of Fusion now. If you want any more information on what you've seen today, please click on the links below. And don't forget, tune in next week where Ben's gonna give me another lesson on how to most effectively do drilling and then thread milling in our titanium components. So thanks very much for watching and we'll see you all again next time.